We start the new year with some rather interesting news. Scientists have identified the first species that consumes viruses as food. So just like we have carnivores and herbivores, we now have virovores. We already have bacteriovores and with virovores now, our understanding of the food chain right at the microscopic level is changing. With virovores, we are realizing that rather than thinking of viruses as simply disease causing agents, we should be thinking of them as a part of the food chain. Viruses are found everywhere on earth. They are present in places that humans have never been and they were present before humans had ever been. An ongoing debate is whether viruses are even alive. When they are in nature, in the wild, they aren't really replicating. They are just cells. But when they are inside of host bodies, they attack and invade and multiply. They are biological. They are made up of essential organic matter. They contain nucleic acids and proteins. They have nitrogen and phosphorus. All of these are a source of nutrients. They are capable of breaking down more complex organic matter as well and releasing further nutrients. And if there are microscopic organisms that eat bacteria and other microscopic organisms, surely there will be something that eats viruses as well. Viruses are incredibly small. We might club bacteria and virus and other microscopic organisms together, but Viruses are hundreds and thousands of times smaller than bacteria in size. They can invade bacteria and destroy them. Those viruses are called bacteriophages. But what destroys a virus? For the longest time, since the 90s, scientists have suspected that protists consume virus. Protists are uni or multicellular but microscopic organisms that are neither plant nor animal nor fungi. They are their own kingdom in the tree of life which is made up of animals, plants, fungi, bacteria and protists. Viruses are none of the above and don't fit anywhere. Protists, which are larger than bacteria, are known to eat other smaller cells. So over a decade ago, scientists began experimenting with them and viruses. Researchers collected seawater samples and identified over 1500 protists and saw that these protists were surrounded by viruses in these samples and they also had viral genes in their DNA. So in 2020, scientists concluded that some protists might be eating viruses definitely, but they hadn't identified which ones. The new finding, which is from the last week of December, goes a bit further. This is from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and the team of microbiologists here decided to test their theory with very specific protists. They collected samples from local ponds and then studied them in the lab. They noticed that when some protists such as Halteria were allowed to graze on these viruses in the samples, the protists grew in size and multiplied while the viruses decreased in quantity. To compare, they also had control samples which were cleansed of viruses. In these control samples, the protists did not grow. These protists are ciliates, which means they have cilia or furry hairs that they use for locomotion and for sensory reception. The main species identified in this experiment is Halteria, but there were also some species of Paramecium that were used in the experiment. To confirm their findings that Halteria and these other protists consume the viruses, the team then stained the DNA of chloroviruses with a fluorescent dye and allowed these protists to graze on the viruses. They found that the Halteria consumed 10,000 to a million viruses per day growing in size. The new Halteria cells also glowed, indicating that the fluorescent dye in the virus particles had been ingested. Overall, with no other food sources, the Halteria population in these samples increased by about 15 times in just two days, while the level of chloroviruses, which was used in the experiment, dropped by about 100 times. In control samples without the virus, the Halteria did not grow. These experiments show that Halteria is the first identified virovore and that ciliate protists play a major role in nature in allowing these viruses to thrive. 
This is new information to us and tells us more about viruses as well. They are everywhere and surely they should be consumed everywhere too. How else do they remain in check? Or are they even in check or just exploding everywhere? How do they form? In fact, when and where did viruses even originate? For the longest time, scientists hadn't been able to tell what came first, whether a virus came first or a biological cell. It was and even still is believed by many that viruses probably came first and then biological cells formed. However, new research suggests that viruses came from biological ancestor cells, the same as the ones that animals and bacteria evolved from. It is now thought that as bacteria and other cells became more complex, viruses simply became more simpler. We've always known that all species ingest viruses as a part of other organic matter. Whether small or big, all life takes in water or material from the soil, which usually consists of viruses. Until now, it was thought that viruses made up very less mass of any ingested source of nutrients and therefore had no caloric value to life. But with the new finding, that changes. We now know of organisms that can not just survive but thrive by ingesting viruses and eating them. These findings are remarkable. A flurry of new research projects is expected to follow. Scientists still don't know how much viruses impact the food chain now and further research will yield more information. As we find out more about the different organisms that ingest different types of viruses, we are expected to know more about exactly how these small deadly creatures contribute to sustaining life on Earth and eventually even where they fit in the tree of life.